Chapter 10, Chapter 10. Here's a dorky theme song I made up for Chapter 10. Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. As you heard in my wonderfully composed intro theme song, uh, here we are with Chapter 10 of my whole darn CD collection. As I've mentioned before, you can watch each and every chapter of my whole CD collection in the CD collection playlist that is uh, available from my YouTube channel's homepage. Uh, each episode is about an hour, usually 50 to 55 minutes, and in each episode I show 90 CDs from my collection, and we're actually just about to the halfway point of my what I call my Stuff With Words section of my CD collection. Uh, yes, my collection is basically divided into five, uh, five groups. The Holiday and Christmas CDs, Soundtracks, Comedy and Spoken Word, and then everything else is basically Stuff With Words and Stuff Without Words. Uh, that is how little I care about uh, genre in the music that I listen to. I don't like to compartmentalize stuff. I guess that's the reason why I don't sort my stuff by genre, is just because that's not really how I listen to music. I just pick out whatever uh, I am in the mood to, to listen to, and I listen to a little bit of just about everything. Uh, there are a couple of genres that are very scarce in my collection, as you have probably been uh, noting through the chapters, and there are some genres that are very plentiful in my collection. But anyway, yes, uh, this, and also, as you might have seen by the thumbnail of this video, this is kind of an all-stars uh, chapter. I mean, you're going to see a lot of very popular artists in here. Um, since I'm starting with uh, one of the artists who has the last name of Jackson, you know what's coming up here. Uh, the first of the Jackson uh, uh, artists that I have is starting off this video. And, of course, in uh, in with the J's, which we're going to go into the K's in this chapter, and uh, in mix in with the J's are two very, very noteworthy and famous artists from the, the 1970s who got their starts in the 1970s. So, anyway, without further ado, and with no um, uh, recent arrivals, as I sometimes do with these videos, as anything that I've gotten recent since the last video that belongs in chapters before this, I talk about here. But I have none that fit that criteria, so... Let's kick things off, shall we, with the Jackson 5. Uh, this is a CD. I used to have a Best of the Jackson 5, but that honestly just wasn't quite enough. I mean, these guys were just so noteworthy, and this is a CD that I picked up at House of Records a year and a half ago, and it uh, combines their first two albums on one CD, and this pretty much has all of the their best, most noteworthy songs on it, and so that fits my uh, collection quite nicely. I don't feel the need to have any other Jackson 5 albums at this point. <clears throat> and then we go on to a related group, I guess you could say, The Jacksons, which basically was The Jackson 5 uh, as uh, teenagers or uh, early 20-somethings. And this has their 70s hits. Uh, let's see. Blame It on the Boogie is a great one. And, uh, of course, oh, Shake Your Body Down to the Ground. That's a dance classic from the 70s. And... Uh, their more, uh, more recent hit, State of Shock, which was done in the 80s, and they uh, teamed up with Mick Jagger to do that song. So, yeah. Some good stuff. Uh, it are, this is arguably so, but in my opinion, your Jacksons collection is not complete without something by the Jacksons from the 70s. And uh, going on to a Jackson who is not directly related to the Michael Jackson family of Jacksons, Alan Jackson. I'm pretty sure he's not related. Anyway, uh, yes, you might have uh, heard, uh, I happened upon a, was it a best of? I think it was a best of single disc in one of my uh, bargain bags last year, I think it was. And I liked it so much, there were enough good songs on it that I decided to upgrade to a two disc uh, essential volume. So yeah, guy's talented. He's got some good songs there. So I seem to be, you know, every, every month that goes by, I seem, seem to be getting a little bit more into country music. Nothing wrong with that, really. And then we are back to the aforementioned family of Jacksons. We have Janet Jackson and her number ones CD. All of her big hit hits are here, obviously. Uh, what Have You Done For Me Lately? I like that one. Nasty. Nasty Boys. Don't mean a thing. Uh, then we have uh, Miss You Much. Great song. Escapade. I mean, the, the list goes on from there. So, uh, yeah. Good stuff. She's... Uh, possibly one of the most underrated members of the Jackson clan. And then we have 
another artist who is, I'm pretty sure, not related to the Jackson family. Uh, Joe Jackson. Yes, uh, yeah. pretty sure he's not related. Anyway, okay, that joke gets a little old the second time around, doesn't it? Yes. Anyway, here we have, you know, Millennium Collection, just like the Icons, which is what the Janet Jackson belonged to. This has all the hits you really, really need. Uh, is she really going out with him? That's a great one. Then we have uh, uh, Steppin' Out, which is a, a fun, fun song from the 80s. You can't get what you want till you know what you want. I love it. That might be one of my, that might be my favorite Joe Jackson song. Uh, so yeah, and Breaking Us in Two, another great one. So there's, there's a reason why they call these uh, Greatest Hits Collections. They have some great, great songs in here. And now here we come to the man, the myth, the legend, Michael Jackson. We have Off the Wall, his, uh, the, the really the breakthrough album after his uh, young teenage career in, uh, was that with Motown? I think it was still with Motown until Off the Wall. Uh, fantastic, phenomenal album. I also have it on vinyl, and I also have on vinyl Thriller. You have, in my opinion, you are not a true music fan if you don't have Off the Wall and or Thriller in your CD or vinyl collection. Some might argue that, but that's my opinion. And then, of course, bad. And you'll notice that these are all the uh, special editions. Uh, but I'm not done there. Uh, dangerous. I decided to pick up that one. Um, the one problem I have with this CD, the special edition, was when I listened to it, it sounded like his vocals were buried, kind of buried in the mix. <clears throat> I'm so, kind of surprised that such a, an error... Unless it was what I was listening to it on, that could possibly be it. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of surprised how uh, mix, such a mixing error could be left into well, to a Michael Jackson remaster for one thing, and but you know to uh, pass a major label. Anyway, I'll have to listen to it again just to make sure. But uh, that was my impression the last time I listened to it was the vocals just seemed to be buried. Then we move on to. Oh, I was going to say another Jackson, but no, this is not Jackson. This is Brendan James, and this is his self-titled sophomore album. I love this one. Uh, it's got one of my favorite songs of all on here is Stupid for Your Love. Great song, fun title, funny lyrics, uh, and it's kind of kind of self-deprecating lyrics in a way. And this is his, I think I mentioned his sophomore album. At least I think it was his sophomore album. Uh, I am on the lookout for his previous one, which I cannot remember the name of. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, I, hopefully, I will have that one at some point. And then we come on, on to come to another James. There are a few Jameses in here, as there were a few Jacksons. Uh, we have this guy is an Australian musician singer, Iran James. I think is how you pronounce the name. It's not Aaron, but it's Iran. I think. And he's a great, great soul singer. Blue-eyed soul is basically what he does. And this was his first album, uh, reviewing the situation. And this was covers of great soul classics like I Get Lifted, which was, was that a, an Al Green song, I think? And then Use Me, which was a Bill Withers song, I believe. And then uh, Strawberry Letter, which I can't remember. Most of these, I can't remember who the original artist was. Uh, I'm All Alone, that was Al Green. And uh, Let a Woman Be a, Lo a Woman, uh, Hercules, Work to Do, Tired of Being Alone, excuse me, Tired of Being Alone, that was another Al Green classic. And you would not believe the voice on this guy, especially when he looks like this. Check out his music. You will not believe the voice that comes out of this guy. And yes, he was, I want to say, 17 or 18 with this album, and whoever discovered him was... Oh, and there's a great anecdotal story. Um, James Brown listened to him at some point before he died before he died obviously and uh and uh he said he came up to Iran James after he was uh performed and he said man you sound blacker than me that came from James Brown okay so check out Iran James and I love him so much that I picked up his sophomore album 10 songs about love and as you can see he's uh, a few years older on this album but still that amazing voice and Funny thing, this album has 12 tracks, even though it's called 10 Songs About Love. But uh, one of my absolute favorites on here is Touched by Love, 
It's a great, great song. And, uh, yeah, this is mostly ballads, so it's, uh, I like this album a little bit less than his debut, but then I appreciate it a little bit more because it's not just covers. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, now on to another James. Uh, this one is from a different generation. We have Etta James, a classic early rhythm and blues and soul singer, gorgeous voice. The title track, of course, is her signature song. And I actually got this from the CD collection of my aunt and uncle. So yeah, I was I was thrilled. I got a bunch of good stuff and, and good vinyl also from their collection. So yeah, I always think of my aunt and uncle when I look at or play the CD. But uh, yeah, fantastic songs on here. Cannot remember if there are any, any other. And this is actually a reissue with four bonus tracks. So awesome little unexpected jewel in my collection from my aunt and uncle. And then we have uh, that CD at last is pretty much all the Etta James I really need. But I found, and I cannot remember now where I found this, uh, the essential Etta James, two discs of uh, stuff spanning her entire career, I think. Oh, no. The Essential Etta James covers her work over the last 20 years, so it does not have anything on it that At Last has on it. So, yeah, covers different territory. So, lots of good stuff. She sounds great with whatever she sings. And then this is, I believe, her last album before she passed away, The Dreamer, and another great album. And this has some... Uh, or does it have covers on it? Um... Oh, yeah, I think it, yeah, it's got uh, the songwriting credits, credits on here. Uh, the song Dreamer was written by Bobby Bland, a uh, uh, blues legend. And uh, let's see. Cigarettes and Coffee was written by Otis Redding, Jerry Butler, Jay Walker, and Eddie Thomas. So that must have been an Otis Redding song. Uh, In the Evening was written by Ray Charles. So, yeah, she does a lot of, uh, a lot of classic songs on this album as well. So, yeah. Etta James is awesome. Let's just face it. And then we come into a one of the full discographies that I have. Just this might be no, this is not the only full discography I have in this in this block of my collection, but it's one of them. Jamiroquai. I found it. Uh, it was about a year ago. Um, a guy that I bought the full dis full discography of the Foo Fighters from uh, later on put up a full discography lot of Jamiroquai. So I had to get on that, and it was almost like he was reading my mind about the artists that I really wanted to deep dive into, because uh, I had been kind of looking for Jamiroquai albums uh, before I found that. So yes, this was their debut album, Emergency on Planet Earth. Then we have The Return of the Space Cowboy, followed by Traveling Without Moving. This is, this is the one that I see, like, everywhere in the used CD sections, pretty much everywhere. And then Deeper Underground. And this one is piggybacked with... Oh, no, this is actually an EP. And actually, I think it's got another CD single on here, or another, or another EP, uh, Canned Heat, is uh, piggybacked on here, because that was also in the collection. So, yeah. And then their album Synchronized. Then we have A Funk Odyssey. And then... Dynamite. This is in the dual disc edition, and I'm kind of uh, on the lookout for a better condition one of this because this one has a few scratches on it that I'm eventually I keep looking for it, but I haven't found it yet. So anyway, and then we have their second most recent album, Rock Dust Light Star, and I had actually bought this one back in the day when it came out in 2010, and if for some reason it just it just didn't stick with me at that point, uh, but uh, since then, my music tastes have obviously changed. I really enjoy this album now. And then their most recent album, Automaton. I was going to say it's Automation, but there is no I in there. Automaton is their most recent album from 2014? No, 2017. Well, a seven-year gap from their last album. Interesting. So yes, uh, I have listened to these CDs a couple of times. It's been a while, but I need to cycle through them again. Good, good stuff. Great uh, funk, trip-hop, EDM type of stuff. Really cool stuff. Then we have 
a two disc set of Surf Rockers Jan and Dean. And this one I found, it was either at Epic Seconds or House of Records, I can't remember which. And this one's pretty well loaded up with their big hits, obviously, but also a lot of uh, alternate tracks, demos, and some, uh, like some radio spots or, uh, oh, you know, instrumental sing along versions. And I think there's a couple of, like, uh, yeah, some, some radio show promos and some other f uh, weird little things that, you know, Easter egg kind of things that might be interesting to the really avid listeners. So, but yes, they're very entertaining. Some of their stuff got pretty formulaic, I have to say, but uh, <clears throat> still entertaining stuff to listen to. Then we have the best of Al Jarreau, excellent soul singer from the 70s and 80s. Um, can't think of any really big hits off the top of my head. Uh, oh, We're in This Love Together. Great, great song of his. Oh, he also did the theme from the TV series Moonlighting. So, if any uh, anybody out there remembers that show. And then I have, and I mentioned this one when I went up out to uh, Oklahoma to visit Noah. I, I This is one CD that I picked up from there. You see me talk about this in my Oklahoma Hall video. A uh, recent album by Al Jarreau, Accentuate the Positive, covers of a lot of great, uh, great American songbook standards. Great stuff. Then we come along to an artist by the name of Jem. She is kind of like, um, kind of like Imogene Heap, kind of like Dido, that electronica chill, soul pop kind of stuff. Excellent, excellent artist. Uh, in fact, I kind of like her, maybe a little bit more than Dido, just because Jem is kind of the underdog of the two. So, but uh, let's see. What's the oh, just a ride is the great uh, the, the the song that was kind of like all over the place. They used it in a bunch of TV shows and movies and soundtracks and stuff. But uh, the, the hits don't stop there, or the, the good songs, I should say, don't stop there. That was her big hit. And also I have the Just a Ride single. And does it have anything? Oh, yes, it has a B-side on it, California Sun. Not the song from the 60s or whenever it was. This, this is an original song. So, yeah, good stuff. Let me reach forward and get my my water. Gotta wet the old whistle there, you know. <clears throat> and then we have uh, a great rock chick. I guess, pardon the possibly sexist, sexist connotation of that word, but hey, she's a rock chick, and I dig I dig rock chicks. Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. Her uh, their greatest hits Bad Reputation, I Love Rock and Roll, one of my favorite songs. So, yeah. Awesome stuff. And uh, she they do, do a covers of Crimson and Clover and Everyday People on here. Everyday People was the Sly and the Family Stone song. So, plenty of good stuff to be heard from Joan Jett. Uh, if, you, if you only are familiar with her hits, dig a little deeper. You'll find some good stuff. And then we have Jewel with her album Pieces of You, and this one actually were all three of these, or at least the first two, were from my sister's collection. So yes. my sister loved Jewel, and uh, as a result, I've kind of gotten to like her stuff too. So Pieces of You and Spirit, her follow-up album. Good, good, good stuff. And This Way. Yeah, I think all three of these were from my sister's collection. Kind of folk pop sort of stuff, uh, if you like that kind of stuff. And then we have uh, this one, I think, was in a bargain bag late last year, if I remember correctly. Jim's Big Ego is the name of the band. And this is uh, No Place Like Nowhere is the name of the album. And this has the song on it that I uh, am familiar with them from by way of the Dr. Demento show, a, a novelty songs and funny songs radio show that used to be on, uh, the song called Stress is, is pretty funny. It's, it's, it's worth a couple of giggles. And, uh, yeah, good stuff. Then we have one of the more unusual uh, things in my collection. This is from 1989. They're called Jive Bunny and the Master Mixers. And kind of as the name implies, these guys do great, ma or did, I think, great mashups of 50s songs. Uh, you know, just from... from I don't know. Actually, I don't know if they included Motown. Or actually, no, Motown was 60s, wasn't it? But yeah, just all sorts of 50s 
pop and rock and soul and R&B songs just matched, mashed up together in great medleys. And there are eight medleys, and you can kind of, if you wanted to freeze frame the video at some point, and you can just see all the different songs that they uh, sample on here. And they are, I believe, the original recordings, you know, some of them might be altered, slowed down, or sped, sped up to fit the beat of the medley, but uh, they tried to extend their career beyond... I mean, this, in my opinion, this is the only good album. Uh, it's just Jive, Muddy, Jive Bunny, the album. Uh, everything after that was... They started using uh, re-recordings of some of the classic songs and and more obscure songs since they picked, you know, the cream of the crop for their first album. So yeah, none of the rest of the albums seemed to hold a candle to Jive Bunny the album, but that's just, in my opinion, that's an 80s classic. Then we have a, an album, uh, an artist that probably few of you have heard of. They're called JJ72, and these guys were Irish, I believe? Uh, possi possibly Scottish. I, I always get Irish and Scottish confused. But yes, it's a trio of, I think, two of them were siblings or possibly cousins, and then there's, there's a, a third one. But yes, they do... Their music is kind of hard to describe. Um, it, it's rock, but kind of... I get hints of Coldplay in there, and maybe some prog rock kind of stuff. If Coldplay... Uh, if Chris Martin had a higher vocal register... Uh, yeah, I mean, the lead singer on this guy is a man, but he's pretty much a soprano almost. So you have to like voices that have higher registers than a normal male voice. But yeah, if Chris Martin had a higher voice and kind of did a prog rock sort of thing, I guess. Yeah, Coldplay meets Radiohead, maybe? But, but not quite as much uh, electronic or glitchy stuff as Radiohead might imply. Although then I might be getting Radiohead wrong. I'm not a Radiohead listener, but anyway. Hopefully that gives you a vague idea of what they listen to. I just think they were very, very unique, and uh, some of their songs are, are really good. Uh, Oxygen is an excellent one, and uh, shoot, I'm when I've got the camera in front of me, I'm terrible at remembering. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what the other really good song on here was, but uh, yeah, good album, I gotta say. And an unusual album. If you like hearing things that are unusual, check out JJ72, self-titled album. And then we are on to a classic artist, one of the two classic artists that started in the 70s that I alluded to at the beginning of the video, Billy Joel. And uh, yes, we have my friend and little brother, little brother Noah to thank for me not having just his uh, Greatest Hits collection. But I broke down and uh, we did a video of... Uh, Piano Man. I don't have his very first album yet. Um, yes, Noah and I did a video, here's a Street Life Serenade, of our, what was it, top five favorite Billy Joel albums. And so I kind of had to, I just had to pick them up and listen to them. And so I could do an accurate uh, ranking and uh, critique of them. Uh, Turnstiles is our next album. So Fun video, go check it out. I'll, I'll, maybe, maybe I'll leave a link to it in the uh, description so you can check it out. The Stranger, his probably his first true breakthrough uh, hit album. And then we have 52nd Street, and I'm pretty sure I have these in chronological order. Yes, 52nd Street has Big Shot and Honesty and My Life, which was used as the theme for a sitcom called Bosom Buddies back in the 80s. Trivia note. Then Glass Houses. Bosom Buddy starred Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks did TV back in the day. I'm just full of trivia today, aren't I? Uh, the Nylon Curtain. And then probably my favorite Billy Joel album, An Innocent Man. Followed by The Bridge. And then I have his uh, concert album from Russia. I believe it's just pronounced Concert in, in Russian. Some people want to call it Cohept. I can kind of see why, just because the letters look like they spell that. Every once in a while I call it corrupt. Anyway, uh, then we have Stormfront. And then the album whose title track is my favorite Billy Joel song, and one of my favorite songs of all time, 
River of Dreams. That song. My sister adored that song. So that is, whenever I hear it, it reminds me of my sister. And then uh, another concert album of his, uh, 2000 Years, the Millennium Concert, a two-disc set. Excellent stuff. So, oh yeah, and that takes care of my Billy Joel discography. Then we move on to one that I picked up. This was in March when I was in Oklahoma. Alan Johannes, he is the front man for the rock group Eleven, which you saw me show off in a previous chapter. Uh, kind of hard rock, although this, this stuff is a little bit more... He goes a little bit more acoustic and a moodier kind of thing on this album. So, But uh, good stuff. Don't like it as much as the Eleven albums, but hey, still good stuff. And then we move on to the other uh, excellent artist. Yeah, there used to not be any separation or anything in between Billy Joel and this artist, uh, but now there is. Alan Johannes snuck in there in between. We have Elton John. I have the two-disc deluxe version of Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. And disc two, it's kind of cool because disc two, the first half of it is a tribute album, covers of the songs by a uh, contemporary artist. And then the second half is a uh, selections from a live concert from 1973. Cool stuff. I found this up at uh, Everyday Music up in Portland a few years back. And now I used to have uh, a lot more Elton, uh, Elton John albums. because Actually, I think I talked about this in my uh, FYE Finds video just uh, a few weeks ago. and uh, But I decided I was not even halfway done collecting Elton John albums. And there was a lot of stuff on the albums that I didn't really care for. So I decided in the interest of saving space, I'm only keeping a handful of the albums that I really like or, or want to keep. Uh, and one of those is Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Good stuff. And a couple of his 80s albums. I believe this one was, yeah, 1980. Uh, 21 at 33. It has the song Little Genie on it, which I remember hearing a lot from when I was a kid. So, and then my favorite 80s Elton John album, Too Low for Zero. You've got to have, you got to love I'm Still Standing. And I guess that's why they call it the blues. So, and well, I guess that was the only, those were the only, the only big hits on the album. And then we have a couple of uh, miscellaneous things. Uh, a duets album called Duets. It's got a lot of great artists on here. Uh, Katie Lang, Little Richard, Don Henley, uh, Tammy Wynette, Gladys Knight, uh, Paul Young, Bonnie Raitt, Leonard Cohen, George Michael. Uh, it, it's worth having if you like Elton John. And then a uh, two-disc live album that I found just recently uh, up at uh, Music Millennium up in Portland. Last year, I think it was. Actually, I, ha I haven't been there yet this calendar year. So anyway, that's called Here and There. And uh, disc, uh, disc one, the Here disc, was recorded in London. And disc two, the There disc, was recorded in New York. So kind of a cool little uh, separation, a little nice little concept for that album. And then here is the reason why I dumped, oh, what was it, eight or nine Elton John albums I'm getting rid of. Uh, so that because I found this at FYE a couple weeks ago, his greatest hits, 1970 to 2002, and it is a three-disc edition. This is a more recent, or maybe it was put out in 2002 like the other ones, but uh, this one is different than uh, one that was in my sister's collection. The third bonus disc uh, did not have the track listing on here, and it, it did not have its own tray. It was just in a little sleeve that tucked inside this thing. But as you can see here, this has three trays in it, and the bonus disc is is legitimized by being shown on the track listing on the back. So there you go. And uh, But I'm not done with my Elton John collection. I've, I've pretty much got, at least for now, every album he's put out since that Greatest Hits collection, starting with Peachtree Road, along with The Diving Board, and one of my favorite recent Elton John albums, Wonderful Crazy Night. And of course, the most recent one uh, from last year, The Lockdown Sessions. Not the best Elton John album. It kind of sounds like a, it kind of sounds like Duets Part Two. And there's some forays into like the hip hop kind of thing, which it just, I just, is, it's, it's just not Elton John. So those tracks kind of stick out like sore thumbs. But there's some good stuff, some good songs on here. 
he features Charlie Puth on one, which is, uh, I, I, I love Charlie Puth, so that's kind of a, a given there. Uh, Rina Sawayama, the song that he does with her, Chosen Family, that's really good. And uh, Lil Nas X, uh, his song with him, One of Me, uh, since this is basically the only way you can get it on physical format, Lil Nas X, um, that's the reason to have you. I want Montero on CD or LP. Come on. Is that too much to ask? Apparently to him it is. Anyway, <laughs> try not to rant here. Uh, but anyway, yeah, good stuff on this album. Not the best album, but hey, I'm not getting rid of it. Let's put it that way. Then we have a collaborative album he did with Leon Russell, The Union. This one was in my sister's collection. So, And this one actually has uh, bonus tracks and a bonus DVD on it, So, which I have not yet watched. I've owned this CD for six years, and I have not watched the DVD yet. <clears throat> and then this next CD actually um, came into my collection thanks to a good friend who's actually been a uh, close friend of my brother's since he was like 10. So it's like they've been lifelong friends, basically. Uh, his name is Jeff. He's he's a music nut like I am. So, you know, he and my brother were friends back in, when they were kids, and he and I have kind of developed our own friendship because since we both love music. So anyway, uh, Eric Johnson and his album... Avia Musicum, I think is how you pronounce it. Great guitar work on this thing. Just excellent stuff. And I am picking dust bunnies off of my shirt because the shelves that these CDs are on are dusty. Anyway, uh, yeah, good stuff on this album, and I want to check out some more of his stuff. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So thank you, Jeff, for introducing me to Eric Johnson. Then we have... Uh, how many? I have several Joneses, and this uh, is the first one. And... Uh, I'm, I'm going to try not to go too fast so you don't have trouble keeping up with the Joneses. <laughs> anyway, uh, dad joke. Uh, Howard Jones. I'm sorry, I had to put that joke in, sorry. Uh, yeah, Howard Jones was an excellent uh, artist from the 80s, primarily the 80s. Uh, you would recognize several of the songs that he's done. Uh, what is Love and Like to Get to Know You Well and Things Can Only Get Better. <clears throat> but yes, Fantastic artist, one of the more underrated artists from the 80s. Yo tengo la agua. My Spanish is terrible, I'm sorry. Then we have Nora Jones, which is uh, another artist that my sister absolutely loved. Uh, I tried getting into Nora Jones. I couldn't quite get into her as much as most of the other artists that my sister introduced to me, or that I that I became a fan of bit by way of my sister. And this is actually one of the last CDs I bought from Skips. And my sister had the CD in her collection, but Skips had the Japanese version. And I'll be honest, uh, hopefully Skip isn't watching this, and if he is, then, well, he probably doesn't care either way. But in a way, I bought this one uh, just because I was sure that Few, that nobody else would buy it. So just to get it off his hands so that, you know, he got money, he would get his money for it, you know, get the credit for the sale or whatever. Uh, so that's one reason. But it did have a bonus track on it, uh, What Am I To You, which I actually, I think, uh, ended up being on one of her other albums. So I actually have that track on another CD anyway. But, yeah. So in, in some ways it was a pity purchase from Skips, but, you know, in other ways, I, I like having Japanese CDs. So they're, they're kind of a fun, a fun thing to collect. So, so yeah, I have my reasons. Ish. Anyway, this is, I don't know if this would be called a side project. No, 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 it's not a side project. Uh, feels, feels Like Home, her sophomore album. I, I just thought it was a side project because it has this uh, Nora Jones with the handsome band and special guests. But no. She did a couple of uh, side project or two with other artists. So that's what got me mis uh, confused. But anyway, as I ramble on without trying to make this video too... Oh, this video isn't going to be too terribly long, I don't think. I'm going through these CDs faster than I thought I would. And Nora Jones's third album, Not Too Late. And this, I think, is the album that has uh, What Am I To You on it. Uh, does it? Oh, no, it doesn't. Or was it Feels Like Home that has What Am I To You on it? Oh, yes. Feels Like Home has What Am I To You on it. So. Oh, well. 
It's too late to return it to Skips. Not that I would want to. Anyway, here we are on, on to the next Jones, Tom Jones. And he's, oh, I was going to do a, a joke here. Um, I was going to say, seeing as how, you know, this the uh, the breadth of my collection, I have so many CDs, uh, you might say it's not unusual for me to have a CD by Tom Jones. I did the joke anyway, even though you knew what was coming. But yes, it's not unusual was one of his big hits. That was that was the joke, <laughs> if you can call it a joke. Anyway, uh, what's new, Pussycat? Is another one, and he did the theme for the James Bond movie Thunderball. That's on here. Uh, Delilah, and uh, that was uh, yeah. They 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 front loaded the really oh she's a lady. That's another uh, classic song by Tom Jones. Kind of kitschy, kind of cheesy, but he he had a heck of a voice. I mean, he's or has he's still alive. He can just belt those songs out like nobody's business. And then oh, oh actually that was the only those were the only Joneses. So I guess you didn't have too much trouble keeping up with the Joneses. Anyway, Janis Joplin. Uh, I suppose this is probably not the best um, representation of her music, but uh, I, I have several of these playlist uh, greatest hit CDs, so I thought I would pick up the Janis Joplin volume. I have to have some some Janis Joplin in my CD collection. I just kind of, I, it just feels necessary, you know. And then we have a great classic uh, early rhythm and blues and blues and soul artist. Uh, do not. Don't sleep on this guy. Don't pass him up. You got to give him a try. Louis Jordan, he is just fantastic. I mean, he does. Uh, let's see, uh, Caledonia is probably his signature song. Just excellent stuff. Uh, Choo 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 Boogie is another song that he does, and it's like the the just the title of that song is fun to say. Choo 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 Boogie, and then uh, ain't nobody here but us chickens. I mean, just reading the song titles just doesn't do this guy justice. Listen to. Uh, a playlist of his or or something. I mean, he's just great. He kind of helped to inaugurate, uh, in some ways he's considered an early pioneer of rock and roll because he kind of paved the way for guys like Chuck Berry and, and Little Richard to to bring their stuff to, to rock and roll. So, yeah, excellent artist. Do not sleep on him. He's fantastic. Then we have an electronica, uh, electro-pop, duo. They were kind of a little unusual, a little weird, and I think they were Dutch, if I remember correctly. They're called Junior Senior, and I believe one of them is gay. I think there, I see, I seem to remember there was some sort of a connection, and as, you know, one reason why there's the rainbow imagery on the cover, but uh, that was not really a selling point. Uh, I mean, even though this was kind of relatively early in the, in art, in the artist being out, uh, LGBTQ out artists, but uh, yeah, it's fun. It, it's ear candy. You, you won't find much of anything substantial in the lyrics on this, but uh, what was the? So I can't. I can't remember what the the single off this album was. Uh, Move your feet. I think that was a single. But anyway, fun, interesting stuff. And I've also got. Uh, they're not a favorite of mine, but I like them enough that I picked up their sophomore album, and I actually got this at Skips. Uh, but it was about a year before he closed. And this is uh, their sophomore album, Hey, Hey, My, My, Yo, Yo. And it's actually got uh, a second disc of uh, bonus songs on here. Bonus songs, remixes? I can't remember. It doesn't have the listing right there. But anyway, they're an interesting artist. If, if you like pop music, st stuff that kind of gets you, you know, gets you in a good mood, lifts your spirits, check them out. Then we have a... Uh, I don't have very many Hawaiian artists in my collection, but I do have this one, Israel Kamakawiwo Ole, I think is how you pronounce his name. I'm probably butchering that, uh, but I, I don't intend to. But yes, this is the best of. And of course, his signature rendition of Over the Rainbow, it's sublime. Okay, it's just a fantastic stuff. And uh, he does a rendition of Wind Beneath My Wings, which is kind of a Kind of a medley-ish sort of thing. Uh, the same kind of treatment he gave to Over the Rainbow. And uh, What a Wonderful World. He does that one too. But uh, yeah. And actually, I think this one was in my aunt and uncle's collection as well. So yeah. You gotta love is. Even if you don't like Hawaiian music. 
And then here we have another uh, playlist CD. This is The Best of Kansas. And uh, yeah, I, I like Kansas. I like a lot, some of their songs. Don't really like them enough to, at least not right now, have any of their studio albums. But uh, yes. uh, my favorite song of theirs, uh, one of my favorite songs anywhere, is uh, Dust in the Wind. And of course, Carry On Wayward Son is an absolute classic as well. So, yeah. It's got all the hits, as most playlist CDs usually do. <clears throat> then we have a 90s uh, band that I had not checked out, even though the 90s, you know, the late 80s, early 90s was, 90s was when I was really getting, getting into music and just picking up CDs experimentally and not knowing what I was going getting into and ended up liking a lot of stuff. This was an artist that passed me by, and they were released right about the same time. Uh, the Katie Dids. And I just picked them up at uh, Epic Seconds a couple of years ago. Uh, these were both on the dollar bin, as I, uh, if I remember correctly. Their self-titled debut album, as well as Shangri-La, their sophomore album. Good stuff. Uh, I, I don't love it as much as the other stuff, of course, that I've been listening to and had in my collection for 30 years. But, uh, yeah, good stuff. Very kind of jangle popish, kind of dreamy sort of stuff which was typical of a lot of 90s pop. Now we're coming to an artist... <clears throat> Let me take a drink first. This guy is one of my absolute favorite vocalists uh, of, of any genre. Uh, this guy is pop, and he was kind of a... He was a teen idol, at least in the UK. He never, he never really broke here in the States, and I so wish he had. And I can't remember... Oh, yes, I, I do remember how I found out about him. It was on a pop compilation that you will see when I get to my compilations later on. But his name is... He went by Kavana. His name is Anthony Kavanaugh. And this was his debut album. And this was his sophomore album, Instinct. Uh, Self-titled and Instinct. The guy had an amazingly soulful voice on him. Well, has. He's still, he's still alive and kicking. I don't know that he's recording anything. Right now, he's much more of a songwriter and producer. Uh, but yes... I mean, his voice was just absolutely gorgeous. One of the most soulful voices, especially for a guy his age, that I have ever heard in my life. And I love his vocals. So smooth and wonderful, and I don't know how else to describe it. <clears throat> and he did, you know, uh, as many upbeat, dancey tracks as he did ballads. And uh, Crazy Chance was one of his uh, hits. He did a cover of a 70s disco song, I Can Make You Feel Good. Can't remember who originally did that one, but uh, uh, let's see. Wait for the Day is a really good one. And uh, for the very first time, it's a pretty good one. And then, uh, let's see, Just the Way It Is off of his album. Instinct is one of my favorites of his. Misunderstood. Um, good Luck Next Time. That's a good example of how funky and groovy and soulful he can get. And special kind of something, and I think I didn't mention that one yet, but yeah. Love the guy's stuff, and I love him so much that I picked up a two-disc compilation of his called Thank You, and yes, he only put out two albums. Those were 10 tracks each, and even though this set is, you know, what, 17 tracks or, or so on each disc, um, there are some songs on these two that were not on this, so that's why I'm keeping all of them. Uh, and yes, but this one has a whole lot of remixes and uh, dubs, and a few B-sides that were not available anywhere else, or ex only on his singles. And in lieu of having all those singles on my shelf, this one. So, And even beyond that, there was a B-side. You're going to find this interesting. I'm going to find it interesting if I can open this. Um, you know how I piggyback certain CD singles onto... Uh, the al album that they came from in order to save, save space. Well, I did that with this guy, and actually, two singles. In the UK, one thing that they used to do to drum up sales for CD singles is they would release CD singles as um, two or three disc sets, you know, and each disc, you know, it would have, of course, have the single, but it would also have at least one B-side and or one remix, you know, unique to each disc. And anyway, long story short, that's the case with uh, this one. I've piggybacked onto both of these the two CD singles from 
his song, I Can Make You Feel Good, because they have a B-side that is not included in here. So I, 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 guess, I guess I'm a completist when it comes to Kavana. And, uh, and yes, one of the discs has the regular version of it, and the other disc has the instrumental version of that same song. So, and I love the instrument. The instrumental is just awesome. And let me see if I can... The name of the song is uh, Dangerous. I love the instrumental just as much as I love the vocal version of the song. So you've just gotten a good look at the almost obsessive complete, uh, completionist tendency I have for my man Kavana. And he did put out in the States a best of CD that had a couple of new songs on it. And unfortunately, it just did not make a splash. And uh, I still wish... And, and he put out a couple of uh, digital singles about in the uh, mid-2000s, I think. And they were so darn good. And I, I wish they'd been on that compilation. I would have kept that compilation if they'd been on there. And unfortunately... And he, he was trying to launch a comeback at that point. But it just never gained traction, and those singles just kind of evaporated. They never never got physical releases, and so yeah, he just he just never got the real traction that I think I still to this day think he deserved. So, so hey, Kavana, you're probably not watching, but you've got a big fan here in the states. Anyway, enough of that. Let's move on to Casey and the Sunshine Band. Uh, these guys. These two CDs I bought in uh, up in Portland, they were at uh, Music Millennium, the remastered editions of their self-titled album. Uh, it's got some bonus tracks on there, as well as their album Part 3. And Part 3 has the song uh, Shake, Shake, Shake Your Booty, and uh, Keep It Come in Love, which was used in a couple of commercials a few years ago. And their debut album has, of course, Get Down Tonight, and Boogie Shoes, and so. <clears throat> there is nothing more kitschy than disco, but these guys, when you they do it, when it's done as well as Casey and the Sunshine Band did it. Now we're moving on to a, an almost complete discography. I did not care a whole lot for their most recent album, and eventually got rid of it. Uh, I might possibly reverse course eventually, but we're talking about Keen, their debut album, Hopes and, uh, Hopes and Fears, and this actually is the dual disc edition. It has some bonus content and videos on the second side, the DVD side. And their sophomore album, Under the Iron Sea. Uh, what is the song? Crystal Ball is my favorite song on this album. And then uh, probably my favorite album of theirs, uh, Perfect Symmetry. Uh, I love the song Spiraling is probably my favorite Keen song. And this one is just filled with good songs. The Lovers Are Losing. Uh, you Haven't Told Me Anything is another great song. Pretend That You're Alone. So, yeah. Wonderful album. Probably the most unlike any of their other albums, but it's awesome. And then their EP, Night Train, which is okay. You know, what can you say? And then uh, my second favorite album, probably, is Strange Land. And yes, this is the uh, Japanese edition, and this has well, like five bonus tracks because, yeah, in I think in the States as well as in the UK they put out the standard edition which was, what, 12 tracks I think in a jewel case and they also put out a deluxe edition in a digipack. Well, this CD, uh, the Japanese edition includes everything with it on the deluxe edition plus I think a couple of other songs and it's in a jewel case. I'm much more fond of jewel cases than of digipacks, so, which you've probably picked up on by now. Anyway, on to the last five CDs in my collection. Here we have a local boy. I mean, he's from the Portland area, I believe. Uh, got his, uh, or he grew up there and kind of got his start there. Matt Carney. His last name looks like it's supposed to be pronounced Kearney, but it's actually pronounced Carney. And this is his major label debut, Nothing Left to Lose. Um, one interesting thing about this guy is he put some uh, some rap or some hip-hop into his sound. Excuse me. But yeah, good stuff. And I've got his uh, following album, City of Black and White, as well as Young Love. Good stuff. I could not um, cite you any 
specific tracks um, off the top of my head, but uh, yes, a good artist, and he's got a he's got a great voice, very distinctive voice on him. And now the final artist, and I think, oh no, this is this is not all of the albums that I have of his. This is another one that's going to be uh, divided between chapters. I kind of like that about my last chapter was because I was able to get all of Jack's Manic and uh, CDs that I have in to, at the end of that video. But anyway, here we have uh, Ronan Keating. He is a member of British or UK boy band Boyzone from back in the 90s. And uh, he was the first artist to break out as a solo artist. I have uh, another solo artist's uh, Boyzone members solo album, um, uh, Stephen Gately. You saw that a few chapters ago. Uh, this guy, I was always jealous that Ronan Keating had the more prosperous solo career than Stephen Gately had, but uh, yeah, this guy, he's got some great, great songs on his discography. Uh, when You Say Nothing at All, that was a good song. Yeah, that was on the soundtrack for the movie Notting Hill, I believe. Uh, Life is a Roller Coaster, that's a fun one. Uh, let's see. Oh, there have got to be some other well-known songs on here. I can't uh, recognize them by the track titles, anyway. But I actually like his sophomore album, Destination, a little bit more than his debut. Because it's got uh, I Love It When We Do. That's that's a really good song. Great, great, catchy song. One of the most fun, catchy songs is I Love It When We Do. And then uh, uh, Love In Each Day, that's a really good one as well. That's also very catchy. And Blown Away. I love that song, Blown Away. And uh, uh, We've Got Tonight, which was, it was a ballad uh, done recorded in the 80s, and so he does a cover of that one, but yes. Excellent album by Ronan Keating, and I have one more of his albums, which you will see uh, and we kick off Chapter 11 coming up fairly soon. So anyway, yes, that's it for my CD, my Hold Arn CD collection, Chapter 10. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms, like, did you not see anything here that you think I should have or think I should listen to? Let me know down in the comments. And also scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.